They didn't quite understand how far videos were going to go and what they could do. And it, so it, it was all part of their budget. So these videos probably cost, at the time, about £400,000. Hi, I'm Martin Kemp, and this is my video rewind on Smooth. Long story short, brings back such lovely memories when I watch this. It's because it was the first thing that we did. First time we ever shot any video. You gotta remember back then videos uh, weren't something that everybody was making. It was um, it was really different. So, and videos were more based around the band rather than making kind of small films that the 80s was known for. I think it wasn't until Ultravox made Vienna. Uh, it all kind of started to change and uh, people, bands used to start making uh, small kind of movies in a way. This was in the early days. You can see it's still on kind of really dodgy video as well because all the lights and the candles they're all burning out. But it's a moment in time that I'm really proud of because it was the first hit single obviously. You know, I signed my first record deal with Chris List Records when I was on my 18th birthday. It was enormous and it just kind of like Within, I think, four weeks, the record was at number five, had sold half a million copies. I was flying around the world on Learjets, and I was living out that dream. And, and this kind of, uh, it's a long story short video, it just takes me back there. No, True was completely different. It was a change for us, because I think what we had done with the first and second albums, Journeys to Glory and Diamond, was we'd stopped being a cult band. We were stopped playing in small clubs and we wanted to make it, you know, when you when you first be in a band, you don't want to be in a small cult band forever. You want to be in the biggest band in the world, to be the Rolling Stones or you want to be the Who. You know, that's who I dreamed of being when I was a kid, when I was at school. And when you walk on stage, at, Wembley Arena that someone would shout out over the microphone, ladies and gentlemen, this is the biggest rock and roll band in the world. That's what you want. The whole of this True album was made in the uh, in Bahamas. I think that was kind of us breaking away from Britain and, and the status that we've built up as this cult band. And uh, to, be, to become like a fully fledged pop band, I think. It was a strange idea, you know, because for a long time, I think people were having hit records purely based on the video rather than the sound of the song that they were making. But, and this is one of those, I think. And the, the song wasn't actually going down that well. People weren't picking it off the, off the album, off the true album, and saying this should definitely be a single, you know. It wasn't really until we made this video that the song took off. And to be fair, you know, if you talk to people nowadays about gold, a lot of people will say, yep, yeah, gold, Spandau Ballet, that's their biggest hit. For a long time, it wasn't. It was true. Yeah, I wasn't there. I missed out on the sunshine. I missed the tan. Listen, I do know, you know, Tony always wanted to be an actor, and I, I suppose uh, he's done little bits and pieces of acting that I've seen in the past that are really nice and really good. Videos were always based around the singers. Um, I was pushed to the side all the time. And I suppose there's a little bit of singer envy in there when I look back at it. You know, everybody wanted to be the singer in a band. And uh, Tony was, but listen, he did a great job of it. He had the best voice around during the 80s. When we were si first signed to uh, Chrysalis Records in the early days, they didn't quite understand how far videos were gonna go and what they could do. And it, so it, it was all part of their budget. So these videos probably cost, at the time, about £400,000. You have to remember that MTV had just started. So everything we did here was on constant rotation on MTV, which meant you were selling records not just up and down Britain anymore, you were selling records around the world, uh, which made it a great advertising tool. Oh, yeah, this Through the Barricades by Miles is the best song that Spandau ever did. You know, it wasn't our biggest hit, but 
it is the best song. I think it's the best song that Gary ever wrote with a band. And, uh, and I don't think he's written one that's as, as strong as that since either. Um, it's my favorite song that we always, we always used to play. And it was one of those things that when it, we first wrote it, it was obviously about the troubles in Ireland and when we first put it together. Um, it was about the troubles and the separation, uh, you know, across the divide of the religions, people trying to get together across that divide. But And then we started to take it on tour and we realised that it wasn't just about a religious story, it wasn't just about that divide, it was about everybody's divide. And then when the band got back together for the first time after about 15 years, we realised it was our song as well, because it was us coming together across that divide that we had built up where we hadn't spoken to each other for 15 years and we all fell out. So it became our song as well, and um, which I thought was the loveliest thing. And after 15 years, the first song that we play in rehearsals is through the barricades. So it means a lot to me.